Today we're here at South Florida Shooting Club. We've got Brad Kidd, national champion. We've got David Radulovich, VTAS world champion. Today we're going to be comparing some of their similarities and some of their differences, how they think through the different shots. All right, guys, what we've got here is a relatively close and slow pair. Uh, really not much or any lead on these shots. So basically, I'm just going to go to the bird, move with the bird, look at the bird. Pull. I'm going to care about seeing the bird, having soft hands when I fire the shot. Uh, so after I kill this A, immediately my eyes transition to B. I get the gun to it, stay with it for a little bit of time, come down with it, and deliver the shot with soft hands and my eyes on the bird. Pull. Okay, so the biggest difference between how Brad shoots this and how I shoot it is basically on the first bird, I'm just going to stay in front of it, have a little bit less gun movement, and let the target come to me. Pull. Second bird, we're both going to shoot it the same way. An incoming shot is very hard to vary in your method. Pull. We're going to run through some of the questions that we often get from our viewers. David, we're in a station here that we walked in and it says that there's a standard clay and an international. Right. Can you talk us through the difference there? I can. Basically, uh, an international target, which is this, uh, is 110 millimeters wide, whereas this one is 108 millimeters wide. They're also, the international bird is slightly thinner than the standard uh, American sporting clays target. This target will fly through the I mean, through the air a little faster, it's slightly more aerodynamics, a little bit, the structural integrity is a little bit harder, so you can throw it faster than this one. Uh, you're not going to see very many of these in the United States, a lot of them are in Europe. Uh, if you shoot uh, bunker trap and international skeet, stuff like that, you will see these, but mainly you're going to be seeing this. This is essentially a specialty bird over here, so a little bit different approach, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah, going to carry a little bit more speed, and we, yeah. we like to know that, but not, not a big, big deal there. You right. know, we, we like to watch that bird fly through the air, and we're going to judge the speed based off what we see, not necessarily worried about whether it's an international clay or, or, or an American. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, guys. Let's, uh, how far is this target that we're about to shoot? we got some big ones here. We're probably shooting stuff out at, what, 70, 75 yards on That's this? That's a big one. Yeah, <laughs> a All lot right, of speed. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> oh. Pop. 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 Thank God, David. Oh. 
weight distribution is, is really important to balance, obviously. So the only way you can truly be perfectly balanced, like a central point of balance within your body, is to have 50-50 weight distribution on each foot, but not just on each foot, also in the front and the back of our feet. So if we're leaning forward on our toes, that's bad. It creates tension and we have to fight our body and gravity throughout the shot. If we're leaning on our heels and you finish the shot stepping backwards, it's just like golf, you lose, you lose accuracy. So. Uh, yeah, weight distribution has got to be perfectly even. The other part about it is in terms of your stance, you know, rotation is really important in shooting too. We don't want, a lot of people move in the wrong spot of their body. So, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of people moving with their hands and there's a lot of tension in the shot and you'll see that if your body is moving like this. Well, if we bring that movement down lower and we're rotating in our whole body, okay, then we want to have more of a closed stance. Uh, okay. Because the further apart your stance is, the more boxed you are in that rotation, and then you'll end up forced into using your upper body or your shoulders to move the gun. Not only do we want the weight distribution and all that stuff, but we also want to stay stand pretty straight. Any, any bending in our body, we're going to get some tension and lock our rotation up and not be able to do it. So uh, you take that, and then in terms of the way that the gun comes into your shoulder, kind of the most natural position for the gun to come into anybody's shoulder and I'll demonstrate right here, is if I take the gun and I basically point it up at a 45 degree angle off of the ground. If I do that, that's when the gun comes most naturally into my cheek and my shoulder. Okay, if I don't do that, watch what happens in my shoulder pocket right here. Okay, you see how it's, it's on my face, right, but not on my shoulder. If I do it, you know, there's, it's all wrong. So basically, what I need to do, mount at a 45 degree angle off the ground, okay with the gun in my shoulder and then to get at the target level what I want to do is bend the core of my body down but it's also important while I'm doing that to make sure that I maintain a central point of balance so there's a difference between leaning forward and bending forward. Okay. My game is all about feel and vision. Uh, if I can match that speed from somewhere between the bird and the lead uh, for a long enough period of time, what happens is the, the bird appears to slow down to me. Once it feels slow, that's when I'm gonna deliver the shot. So all I'm really trying to do is figure out how to get the bird cut off, get to the bird, move with it for you know a given amount of time. Once it feels slow, I'm gonna deliver the shot. Now what happens, but what I think about in terms of uh, it, it, autopilot for me, my hands are gonna stretch to the lead. They're gonna kinda go out there on their own. Um, so my, ba my game is more of a feel-based game, less of a lead-based game, but all the things that are important to David, uh, soft hands, balance, movement, you know, matching the speed of the bird, that's all, that's all very, very similar. I probably play the game from a little bit less lead, uh, a little more time in the gun. Okay, so it sounds like you're saying I'm going to match the speed and then give it the lead that's required so we'll see a pull away in yours yeah you should see a pull away in mine now again i'm not the one that gives it the lead required that happens when the slacks out of the trigger without my knowledge it's it's all about me keeping my hands unbelievably soft and giving my hands to the eyes so if i keep my eyes on the bird keep the tension out of my hands match the speed for a beat my hands should go on their own at the end of the shot what is your left hand doing what is your right hand where are you steering and what is your grip on that forend all right. Well, what's kind of funny about this is, is in, in a way, the entire movement is the body. It's zero hands. Right. What we're trying to do, envision okay. that this shoulder is actually pointed somewhere. Okay. And there's a specific shoulder angle, body angle that, that, that is going to be a fixed position for me. So I'm using my ankles to rotate. I'm using my back and my torso to get, you know, my up and down motion. So my hands are, are really doing nothing. The, the body is doing the entire move. Now, truly what I've done is I've put the entire game into the hands. I'm looking for my hands just to die, to leave all the tension, to be soft as they can be. The big movement of the clay is with the targets, and I fully give my eyes, or give my hands to my eyes, and just let my hands kind of tell my eyes where to go. I, I kind of stay out of the way in, in terms of that. I want good balance, good rotation, good physical motion with the bird, eyes on the bird, let the hands go. My hand when I shoot is under the gun. Okay, the reason for that is depending on your hand, whether it's Go ahead and demonstrate. Well, we're, we're the same. Yeah. What we're looking is is the support of the gun. That it, we have to be under. All right. If I were to say, hold up this heavy weight for as long as you can, are you going to come in here and take that weight like that? No. You're not going to be able to hold it very long. You come in under where you feel like this elbow, the shoulder, everything's in a nice good line under the gun, supporting the weight of the gun. We like to point that finger. That's a natural pointing motion. You know, if we're pointing at something moving through the sky. So I've got good form. I, I really care about this wrist, this front hand wrist. I want that wrist nice and straight, not bowed and cocked. So when you see guys get on the side, cock that wrist and get up in there, that's bad form. I'm looking to come underneath. So 
support the weight of the gun. Keeping that wrist straight is going to guide that gun more inside. I'm not looking to be out on the arm. Uh, so that's the front hand shooting position for me. Yeah. Okay. The more, if your hand is less under the gun, so I hold my hand like this because it takes my hands out of the shot. I'm trying to move, like Brad said, with my body, not my hands. If my hand comes over to the side, I'm going to be pushing and pulling the gun. Okay. And that's bad. You lose control and precision. If my hand is underneath more and I bring this part of my elbow down under, then I gain more control in, in, in the movement of my gun. To sign up for more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or subscribe to our exclusive email list at the bottom of our website.